On one ordinary morning, I shuffled through the limited aisles of my goals inside as I looked through the same acrylic yarns as I've done the last 30 visits. Looking through my purchases and seeing the same yarn that I always tend to buy due to convenience and price, I realized I craved an unordinary yarn shopping experience. So I looked on Google Maps and found a couple independent yarn shops that looked promising and decided to take an unordinary trip on an ordinary day to visit those said yarn shops. Before I go though, I need a budget. With this budget, there are rules that we need to follow. Rule number one, for each yarn shop, we can only spend up to $40. If it's absolutely necessary, we can stretch it up to 50, but we need to keep in mind that these yarn shops aren't going anywhere. So if we need something, we could always come back and get it sometime later in the future. I know this budget is incredibly low, but I'm in my saving money era and I just can't justify spending a whole bunch of money on yarn that I don't need. Which brings me to rule number two. We're only gonna get yarn that we can't get anywhere else. So if there's some cool unique yarn or hand dyed yarn from an independent dyer, then we can get it. We're also in the market for mohair yarn and any other cool funky yarns that are just incredibly unique. And if the yarn is super cool, we can stretch the budget a little bit. And rule number three, Let's have fun. Since I live an hour away from the majority of the shops on my list, I decided to start with the farthest yarn shop and work my way down. The first stop on this excursion is a small shop located near Marietta called Eat Sleep Knit. Hi you guys! So right now I'm in Yeehaw, Georgia at our first stop which is Eat Sleep Knit. I can't zoom in but yeah. So I'm excited to go in. This is the first time I've been in an independent yarn shop in Georgia so hopefully it's nice! Walking in, it felt as if I walked into a library, but instead of books, there was yarn and tons of it. They had loads of sections from brands that I'd usually buy online and also small brands, which I thought was really cool. They even had a whole section for Nora yarn, which was really awesome because that's one of my favorite brands. Since there was no one else in there at the time, it was so quiet. Like it felt like I was in a school library getting ready to take my final exams, but in a way it was still cozy. They had lots of cute, unique yarn, especially this one, which I thought was the perfect yarn. But then I saw the price and my mouth flew open. It's so unique and pretty, but $56 really threw me off. I know it's probably because it's ethically sourced and it's made by hand and all that, but it just, <laughs> I wasn't expecting $56. The same brand also had little mini skeins, which was $6 and I thought that was pretty nice. These unicorn tails were so cute. And so was this flat yarn. It was hard for me to choose what yarn I wanted to get and it took literally 20 minutes to figure it out after the whole almost an hour and 30 minutes of going around and looking at the yarn. But I finally decided and went to check out. At the front desk, they gave me a scratch off ticket, which gave me $5 off and I was happy about that because I kind of went over budget. But in the end, I was happy with my purchases. All right, so I ended up with three skeins of yarn. I'm not gonna show yet because I'm gonna have a whole reveal at the end. Um, but my total for this first place came out to $43.15 and that's with the $5 that I got off uh, with the store credit. So I was a little bit over budget, but so far I'm doing okay. But now it's time to get to our second destination, which is one more row. 
The next stop is One More Row, located in Woodstock, which was only 30 minutes away from the first shop. The location was pretty convenient if you wanted to stop and go grocery shopping or grab a slice of pizza before going in, which I ended up doing. Going into this yarn shop, I thought it was really pretty because of how bright it was on the inside. The yarn was really cute and it was pretty crowded when I got there. They had finished projects for sale on the racks, which was really cute, and they had this cute seating area and even a sales rack, which I spent like 30 minutes looking through. They were also teaching a knitting class in the middle of the shop which was really nice. This pink yarn was really cute but I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend $30 on it. Same with this Paris yarn. After going through the shop I chose my yarn and headed on to the third and final stop. So for the second place I spent like $60. I didn't mean to but you know how like you go to the cashier and they're like oh it's 60 dollars and you're just like oh, well i don't want to be rude so i just bought it anyway but i know i need to get over that and plus the things that were on sale i thought they would be cheaper than they were so that's the other thing before i go into the third place there's this used bookstore over here that i wanted to check out um i don't know why my voice sounds so raspy right now but yeah, I'm gonna go into the bookstore first, chill out for a little bit, and then visit the third yarn store. I stopped by this bookstore nearby called Liberty Books just to see how it was since it had good reviews. The bookstore looked cool, but the majority of the books weren't really for me. So I went to the comic book store right down the street and it was more aligned with my interests. It had this cool Spirited Away art book that I wanted, but it was $50 and who knows how much I had left for my budget at that time. After I left the bookstore, I walked over to the third and last stop of the day, which which was eco-friendly crafts located in Lawrenceville. The shop had a lot of yarn, but also offered materials for other crafts like drawing and sewing. They offered a ton of yarn, and I feel like this shop was the most affordable out of all of the shops. They had these cute little yarn smoothies at the front, and the best part was the owner had Angora rabbits. He told me their names are Knit and Pearl, which I thought was really cute. He said he brushes them daily, and when he does, he stores the fur in this container, and I was allowed to feel it. And when I tell you it felt literally how a cloud would feel like, I'm not even joking. I was really happy with the fact that they offered sari ribbon, which I used on my purple crochet dress once, and I absolutely loved it. After choosing the yarn I wanted, I went ahead and traveled home. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day because I got really tired after doing all that driving yesterday, but I'm finally here with the reveal of the yarn that I purchased. In total, I got 10 skeins of yarn, three from the first place, five from the second place, and two from the third place. For the first place, I spent $43.15 which is $3 over budget. They gave me like this little scratchy card thing and they're like, whatever you get, since you're a first time customer, you can use that on your purchases or you get like a freebie or something and I got $5 off. So with the $5 off, it was $43.15. Uh, the second place was kind of rough. I spent $63.60 there. Um, and the wild part is, is that everything except for one I got on sale. Everything that I purchased, um, most of the yarn that I grabbed was 30% off. But the thing is, it didn't have the sale price on there. So that could have been where I slipped up and I was just grabbing stuff. I could have asked, but you know, it is what it is. At the third shop, I spent $32.82. So in total, I spent $139.57. And with the budget being $40 per shop, I went $19 over budget, which isn't bad, but it isn't good. Like we were supposed to stick to the budget, but the second the second place threw me off with the sale prices. They didn't have the sale prices on there. And I could have asked, but it wasn't that much of a concern. And there was a lot going on, so I was probably overstimulated or something. Now to reveal the yarn. So East Sleep Knit, it was the farthest from where I live. So I started there first. Their selection is huge as you've seen. Um, and I was in there for about two hours just trying to figure out what yarn I wanted because there were so many nice yarns, but a lot of them were over budget um, because the majority of the yarn in that store was like independently owned, um, which was really cool. And that was what I was looking for, but I didn't expect it to be so much. So I was having a hard time choosing and a hard time like finding some in budget. Like the one yarn that I really, really, truly liked, I didn't buy because it was like $56 
And so I told myself if I can find a project that it would be used for so that I know how much of it I need to specifically get, then I might, <laughs> I might think about buying it because 56 dollars for one skein of yarn is a lot of money. So I ended up with these. This first one I got is from the same brand as that pink yarn that I really liked. It's called Emma's Yarn. I feel like this is probably going to be one of my favorite yarn brands. All of Emma's yarn is so incredibly beautiful and very expensive, but I just know that it's because it's like probably ethically sourced. It's probably done by hand and everything. So I'm not going to complain about it too much. Um, this is called Twilight. It's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And I need to buy one of those windy things to roll my yarn because doing it by hand really sucks. I'll probably invest in that sometime this year. Um, but yeah, it's really pretty. It's not too soft. It's not too rough. It's just, it just feels like every other yarn you'll feel. Um, I really like the color. It's very pretty. And maybe when I think of a project for it, I'll probably buy more. This next yarn is actually from the brand Malabringo. I feel like I've used their yarn before. Uh, the tag says this is called, the color is called Pink Frost and it is 100% merino wool. For some reason, I really like pink yarn. Like that's the first yarn that grabs my attention. But yeah, it's soft, it's nice and I really like it. The next yarn that I got from Eat Sleep Knit is Malabringo again, which I didn't know, um, but it's this 100% superwash merino wool in the color Flama. It's the Caracol um, yarn that they have. I The second I saw this, I was like, this makes me think of like dragons and stuff. And I really love how in the yarn, it has these black threads throughout it. And I just think this is so beautiful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is the unique yarn I'm going for. By the way, all of these shops, I 100% recommend you go if you live in Georgia or if you're ever going to visit Georgia, definitely go to these places because everyone is really, really sweet and kind and they have amazing yarn to offer. The next place I went to is called One More Row. Um, it was like 40-ish minutes away from the first location and it was very light and bright. There was space inside and as you saw, they had a little knitting class, which I thought was cute. Um, the people were really friendly and the yarn was really nice as well. And they had a sale, which I saw and stuck to that section mainly. Um, but the one that I didn't get on sale was this. It says the fiber company Ciro Ethereal Beauty. It is 40% alpaca, 40% cotton, and 20% wool. Uh, the second I saw it, I was like, whoa, this is so cute. I need to get it. It says it's a fingering weight, and I already see uh, like a sweater I could make with it, but I would definitely need a couple of more of these. When I was buying it, the lady at the counter was saying how much she really liked this yarn, so it'll be fun to play with. This next yarn is from the brand Barico Lumi. It's 80% cotton, 18% polyester, and 2% other fibers made in Italy. Um, it makes me think of like waist beads, if you know what that is. It's really pretty. They had a whole bunch of different colors, but I settled on this one just because um, this colorway in particular made me think of waist beads, and I thought that was really cool. I also got um, this Juniper Moon Pharma zoe stripes which is 60 percent cotton and 40 percent linen and i thought it was pretty amusing when i saw this in there because i saw this brand in eat sleep knit the first shop and i was like i really want this but it's just a bit too pricey and then the second place had it on sale um i bought two of them one is the color sepia and then the other one is the color Sage. I really like yarn like this and I'm really curious to figure out what I can do with it um, just because it makes me feel like I have been successful in life and I can like settle down in a an old cottage where I make all of my dishcloths and sunlight leaks through the windows. That's what this makes me feel like. And the last thing I got from 
one more row is this Noro yarn. I've worked with this yarn for my green maxi skirt and I really loved this yarn. It's so pretty, it's so nice. They're just really expensive. So the only time I was able to get it was when it, of course it's on sale. But yeah, this yarn is pretty rough, but it's not, it, it would definitely be itchy if you made this into a sweater. So I would just use this for other things like accent colors and things like how I did in my skirt. This was only like in certain spots of the skirt so it doesn't bother you or anything. But, oh, this yarn is 40% wool, 25% silk, 25% polyamide, poly, poly, polyamide, polyamide, and 10% mohair. The lady also offered a bag of lavender, which is cute. Um, it smells really good and yeah i have lavender now the last place that i went to is called eco-friendly crafts um this one was an hour away from one more knit i all I, I liked all of the shops but i feel like this one was my favorite mainly because of how knowledgeable he was in fiber making and just how much he supports different like communities and stuff like when i walked in he was talking about how like a lot of proceeds that they make go to like LGBT arts and stuff like that. Like when I was buying one of the yarns, he was saying how like every yarn in the shop is superwash and he explained the process of superwash where it's like the, it goes through a machine to filter out stuff and then it goes in again and again. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. Like he, he, he's really passionate about his job and I really like that. He also has some cute rabbits, which was nice and yeah, that was the first time I felt Angora um, fur, and it felt like a cloud. Like, I, I was feeling it, and I was like, whoa. It doesn't even feel like like I'm touching anything. And he says that the only way that he um, collects their fur is like when he's like brushing them, because they have really long hair, so he just brushes them. Whatever falls out, he puts in like a container and stuff, which is the one I showed earlier. And yeah, it was, it was a nice shop. I really liked it. I'm gonna go back one day, for sure. Um, however, I only purchased two skeins of yarn there just because I I had already bought a lot of yarn. I was like, okay, I want to keep it brief, only get some nice yarn. So the first yarn that I got was this Briggs Little Regal yarn. It says it's produced in Canada. Oh, it's 100% pure wool. It's this pinkish, purple, reddish color. Um, it doesn't feel the best but this can be used for cute things if, if i can figure it out and then the second thing i got there is Linares de Cios yarn uh where is this made it's not telling me um but it says it's 50 percent 50 percent paul worth and 50 percent corey dale and it's superwash um I don't know what that means, unfortunately. But yeah, I, I got this because it's really pretty. I loved the gradient brown and orange type of color scheme that it's going with. And that made me buy it. Out of all the yarn that I purchased, these right here are probably my favorites, just because they're more unique. They're not really typical in my yarn collection. But yeah, I really liked these the most. And then, like I said, all of the shops I went to was really nice. Um, I would definitely go back to each depending on what I need. And thankfully, I don't know if the other two shops do it, but the first shop, they have an online website. They have a website where you can order anything that you saw in store online, which is really convenient. So I feel like if anything, I would just order online to make it easier on myself. Um, but yeah, that was the yarn haul. I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun doing this. It was great exploring all of the other shops outside of your average Joann's and Michael's. Um, I would love to do that. It would be cool to do this in like a bunch of different states or countries. Like if I go to Japan, I'm like visiting all of the yarn shops in Japan or when I go to New York at some point, I'll try to make one there as well. But yeah. I will see you in the next video. Bye.